The tropics have taken a surprising turn as we now have two different named tropical storms in the Atlantic Ocean, one of which that is in the Caribbean Sea and then the other one north of the Greater Antilles. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about both of these tropical systems. In addition to that, we're also going to talk about the potential for a few tornadoes in parts of the high plains later today. Let's begin with what's happening in the Atlantic Ocean right now and we have tropical storm Nadine that has formed just to the east of Belize and east of the Yucatan Peninsula. This system was more expected to develop. We talked about this yesterday in yesterday's forecast. This has become a tropical storm. Big boom of convection has also developed near the eye and this has actually become a pretty organized tropical storm with maximum sustained winds right now at around 50 miles per hour. We also have tropical storm Oscar that has formed just to the north of the Greater Antilles. That one is a much smaller storm and also is not looking nearly as organized but that one actually organized much faster than we expected. We didn't think that was going to develop. It only had a 10% chance of development 12 hours ago from the National Hurricane Center. It went from a 10% chance of development to a tropical storm in no time. So that one is actually a lot more surprising than So here are the two different else. named storms in the Atlantic Ocean. You'll notice that tropical storm Nadine is literally about to make landfall. It's actually moving west. It is going to make landfall in the northern side of Belize during this afternoon. It's also just to the south there of the Yucatan Peninsula. This is actually going to be a very interesting storm storm though we're going to talk more about it in just a moment it's going to take a very interesting path and then we also have tropical storm oscar which is obviously not very far from florida but keep in mind that this is a relatively small storm and it's not very organized right now we'll talk more about the track and intensity here in just a moment uh, but again that is just to the north right now of the dominican republic and as well as haiti Here's a look at Tropical Storm Nadine, and this is honestly a very organized tropical storm for it literally just forming last night. The convection is pretty impressive. We've had very deep and cold cloud tops back over uh, near Belize, and that's pretty indicative here of at least some intensification and also a more organized tropical storm. Again, it's about to make landfall. This more than anything will be a big rainmaker for Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula as it continues to move to the west. Now, this is the National Hurricane Center's forecast, and I want to point out a couple of things. One, this doesn't really tell the story on where this is going to be going. It has a very interesting track that I'll show you in just a moment. But I do want to point out that the wind field is actually relatively large for tropical storm force winds. It is moving west at about 8 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour. It is going to be a tropical depression by tonight. It is going to be making landfall in just an hour or two from this forecast being uploaded. And then eventually it'll move to the west. And one thing that is going to be very interesting is that this particular tropical system is actually expected to make its way across Mexico and move into the Pacific Ocean. So we actually could see this re-intensify into a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane as this moves into the Pacific Ocean as we go into next week, which is very interesting. If you remember, Hurricane Milton actually began here in the Pacific Ocean. It was a tropical depression. It moved north. It went into Mexico and then eventually went into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. This almost kind of feels like the reverse. This system's beginning in the, you know, the Caribbean Sea and is going to make its way into the Pacific Ocean. So I thought that was a pretty interesting little tidbit here to this tropical system. Here's the intensity guidance. So again, this is expected to weaken into a tropical depression over the rest of the weekend. Eventually, as this moves back into the Pacific Ocean, several models have this going at least to tropical storm intensity by early next week, if not even near hurricane intensity sometime during the middle or end of this upcoming week. And then this right here is Tropical Storm Oscar. This particular tropical storm, again, kind of came out of nowhere. We had an idea that this might develop. It was a very low chance for a while, but it's actually become more organized, and we actually have an area of spin. Look at this little convection right here. If you look very closely, you'll see it actually spinning here with the cloud tops being pretty deep there, meaning, you know, cold cloud tops aloft. That means it's a bit more of a healthy tropical storm, despite saying that it's not actually that organized. You'll notice that the convection, even on the outside of this, is very minimal and is not organized whatsoever, but it is impressive that this has been able to form. Notice it is just to the north right now of both the Dominican Republic and Haiti this afternoon. It is continuing to move to the west and it will be approaching the Bahamas as we go throughout the day today. So this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center and again the track is not for certain going to go north but we do think that this is going to eventually turn. So let's talk a little bit more about it. There are tropical storm warnings that are in effect for Cuba and as well as the Bahamas. Right now it is expected to continue to move to the west over the next several days. 
It's actually expected to remain a tropical storm all the way through going through Cuba, and even by Wednesday, it's still expected to be a tropical storm. So we don't think that this is going to be weakening back down to a depression or even just a disorganized low pressure system anymore, despite many models showing that this would just weaken out entirely. Now, I do think that there is a chance that this could become our next hurricane. There is a chance if it's able to organize quick enough, it is still in an environment where I think it will have the capability of becoming maybe a low-grade hurricane as this moves in the direction of Cuba over the weekend. However, it is at least expected to become a middle-grade tropical storm. The National Hurricane Center has it forecasted to reach maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour. This is the latest track and guidance from several different computer models, and this is the reason why there could be some changes to the forecast in terms of the path. I don't really think we're going to see any major changes. However, there is a very slim chance that this system actually could go more west and go over Cuba and eventually go into the Caribbean Sea, and that could become a bit more of a threat maybe for the United States. However, I'm still not very confident that that's going to happen. Most models are indicating that this will eventually turn to the north, eventually steering to the northeast through the Bahamas, and then eventually going actually in the direction of Bermuda. So that'll be something to watch for, especially if you're back up near Bermuda. Now here's the intensity guidance. Many models are not showing anything beyond a mid-grade tropical storm. However, I still think that there is at least a small chance that this could become maybe a low-grade hurricane. At this point, though, almost every single model showing something between a low to middle-grade tropical storm, many of them not even showing much beyond that. So with all that said, obviously very interesting to say the least that we now have two tropical storms in the Atlantic Ocean. The good news being that neither of them are currently expected to impact the United States. However, if that does change, we'll let you know, so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Now, on the flip side of things, we actually have some things to talk about closer to home. Beginning with today, we actually have a slight risk of severe weather in New Mexico and parts of West Texas. And the reason why this is interesting is because we actually have a 5% tornado risk that is in play for today. Tomorrow is a little bit similar, smaller risk, but there's another marginal threat back over in eastern New Mexico with another chance maybe for a couple of tornadoes. I think today, though, will be the bigger day for tornadoes, so make sure that you do have a tornado action plan in place and multiple ways to receive alerts. And today's severe weather threat is actually being aided by a bowling ball trough. These are very typical during the month of October and November, where we see these cutoff lows away from the jet stream, and this is actually able to propel a tornado threat usually. The problem with this threat when it comes to the overall organization of it is that it's not a very favorable environment. If it was actually further to the east, maybe in like Texas or Oklahoma, I think we'd be talking about a tornado outbreak. However, we are somewhat fortunate that it's not in that type of environment. With that said, we still have a lot of wind shear across New Mexico, which is going to aid this tornado threat both today and tomorrow before the trough eventually moves over the central plains and Midwest where it will be weakening. So it's not going to intensify. It'll actually weaken as it moves to the east, which means severe weather not really expected in those areas. So for today, timing looks like this. This afternoon, we'll be watching for storms to fire up around 2 to 3 o'clock. Those are going to be the ones capable of potentially a few tornadoes. This threat will continue throughout the mid to late afternoon and into the early evening hours before eventually moving towards areas like Roswell and also near the interstate east of Albuquerque. And then eventually by the late evening and overnight hours, this is just all rain. And then once we go into Sunday, we're going to be watching for one more round of a few more supercells. These will develop probably a little bit later in the afternoon, around 5 to 6 o'clock, and then eventually moving to the northeast, mostly confined again to eastern New Mexico. And then eventually by Monday morning, this threat is all said and done. So I'm not planning on being live for this today, but again, if anything does change, we'll let you know. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified if we do go live. And also a huge announcement to end today's video. We do now have drunk NATO phone cases. This is something people have been asking for forever. So they are now officially out at shopmaxvelocity.net. If you go to the accessories tab, it is the first thing that you'll find is the drunk NATO phone cases for both Samsung and also iPhone. So if you want to get one, again, that's at shopmaxvelocity.net. Also the top link in the description below. Also our 500,000 subscriber merch is available for about 12 more days. So if you want any of this, like our t-shirt, hat, beanie, mug, or sticker, you can get it at shopmaxvelocity.net. We do have one signed hat left. So if you want to get it, last chance to do so is again right now. So make sure to go check that out now.